Hello everyone, welcome back to the discussion on multiple elites. We are discussing about the ABO blood group in man. The ABO blood group in man was in man was proposed by Karl Landsteiner, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1930. And uh, this finding allowed uh, or uh, it paved the way for AC blood transfusions to be carried out. The problem uh, which uh, Landsteiner uh, focused on was uh, when he was mixing different types of blood. Some types of blood were mixing uh, properly, but the other type they didn't uh, mix well. They formed clumps, which was called as agglutination. And he was, um, uh, or he was researching on uh, why such clumping occurs in some type of blood, and uh, it does not, uh, it does not clump in some other types. And uh, this particular question led to the discovery of this particular uh, blood group system is uh, referred to as the ABO blood group system in man. So the ABO blood group uh, system is mainly based on uh, the presence of antigens, which are glycoproteins which are expressed on the RBGs. So there are uh, certain min minute or subtle differences in the terminal residues of the sugar attached to the surface proteins, which distinguishes the A and B blood group antigens. So, uh, the surfaces of uh, the erythrocyte uh, contain genetically determined antigens, uh, 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 antigens which are composed of uh, uh, glycoproteins. Based on the presence or absence of various antigens, the blood is categorized into different blood groups. Uh, the same is done with the ABO blood group. The ABO blood group is mainly based on two antigens. They are uh, referred to as the A antigen and the P antigen. The carbohydrate or the glycose uh, part, so as you see here, here in the diagram, the carbohydrate or uh, otherwise called as the glycol part of the antigens is composed of, so uh, this is the RBC surface, you can see many glycoproteins and on this glycoprotein, this one has been enlarged, it is shown as enlarged, uh, the particular oligosaccharide which is uh, the sugar residues which are attached. And it is composed of the sugar residues is composed of uh, mainly uh, you can uh, call it as two components uh, an oligosaccharide which is usually called as the H substance or the H antigen and a terminal monosaccharide which is attached to the H substance and that is designated either as an A antigen or a B antigen. So if you see here uh, in uh, if you take this particular uh, uh, RBC in this RBC you can see four uh, sugar units which are attached which forms something which is called as the H antigen capital H antigen and this uh, capital H antigen uh, it is an oligosaccharide which is composed of uh, something which is called as uh, uh, four uh, uh, residues or four monosaccharide units which are attached to form an oligosaccharide of which uh, the uh, the uh, Terminal one, this uh, uh, dark red one, the terminal most of the H substance is called as the, or uh, the sugar is a, a fucose sugar. A fucose is attached here. The terminal, uh, the terminal region of the H substance is a fucose. And uh, apart from this H substance, in some uh, cases, the H substance is mo modified with a monosaccharide. And that modification, so you, here you can see, so this was the H substance and here it is modified by the addition of another monosaccharide. Here also it is modified by the addition of another monosaccharide. So if this H substance is modified by the addition of this n acetyl glucosamine, that means the terminal region of uh, H substance was, as I said, it was fucose. Now it will be masked and another terminal sugar will be terminal in the sense when you have uh, uh, a particular, so if this is uh, the RBC surface and uh, this is a protein and from that protein you have a branch of uh, uh, oligosaccharide which is having uh, various sugars which are attached like this in um, branches here, one sugar like this uh, and other sugar which is attached here. So uh, the terminal one, terminal sugar means the one which is exposed to the exterior is called as a terminal sugar. For H substance, the terminal sugar was this one, which was fucose. And now uh, the terminal sugar is another monosaccharide and in this case it is N-acetyl uh, glucosamine. And in this particular case, it is fucose. And if this, uh, 
H substance is modified by N acetyl glucosamine that is called as the A antigen. That means when the terminal sugar is N acetyl glucosamine, that uh, that antigen will be called as A antigen, and if it is galactose, it is called as it, uh, it is called as B antigen. If the terminal sugar is fucose, it is called as H antigen. So that means an, it is an unmodified uh, H substance. So the biosynthesis of these antigens, so there should be uh, someone which is responsible for the synthesis of uh, these antigens. And this is by the action of uh, certain enzymes. And the enzymes are mainly uh, the, collectively called as glycosyl transferases. It is nothing but uh, they are uh, transferring uh, monosaccharide units onto protein. So because they transfer sugars, they are called as glycosyl transferases. Uh, to either uh, lipids or proteins, but in the case of uh, blood group, uh, it is uh, to proteins, which forms glycoproteins. So the H substance is added by specific uh, enzyme, which is called as uh, uh, fucosyl transferase, because the terminal one, because that is this is the enzyme that is catalyzing the final addition of uh, fucose onto the H substance, and uh, that is catalyzes the final step in the synthesis of the molecule. So here synthesis uh, is, uh, uh, just means that on the surface of RBC membrane you are having the integral protein. On to the integral membrane protein these particular uh, sugar residues are attached by these enzymes. So if a fucosyl transferase is present or uh, uh, if a gene produces fucosyl transferase in your body, uh, your uh, RBC will be added with the H substance with the terminal fucose. And depending upon the genetic constitution of the individual, the H substance is modified as we said in the uh, uh, previous slide. It will be added by a terminal either in acetyl galactosamine which will be designated as the A antigen or by galactose which will be designated as B antigen. So people whose RBC display only A antigen, that means uh, such individuals if you observe they will be having only two enzymes. One is for adding its substance of fucosyl transferase and the other one will be for adding uh, the uh, N-acetyl glucosamine. And uh, such individuals will be typed as type A. And those which are having or those with only antigen B on the RBC will be typed as type B. Individuals having both A and B, that means in some individuals their RBC will have uh, half of the integral proteins will be having A antigen and half will be having B antigen. Such individuals will be designated as AB blood groups and uh, some individuals will not have A antigen or will not have B antigen. They will be having only the H substance and such individuals will be designated as type O. And these glycoproteins are called, um, we were calling these uh, particular uh, sugar residues or glycoproteins as antigens. So the terms antigens are usually or uh, usually comes in the discussion of immunology or that indicates something which is foreign, uh, which uh, comes into our body and that is triggering an immune response by the production of antibody or cell mediated immunity, etc. That means it, it is a substance which is uh, stimulating our immune system to work, which is something which is foreign. So why RBC proteins which are not foreign, which is present in our body are given such names uh, or why they are called as antigens? The reason is that these glycoproteins are called antigen because antigens because the antibodies, there are antibodies which are produced against these glycoproteins which are seen in the blood plasma. So uh, something which triggers the formation of antibody or something which is triggering the uh, immune system to work and, uh, and act, such molecules are usually referred to as antigens and that is why these uh, blood group uh, or uh, these particular glycoproteins or specifically the carbohydrate residues, they are defined or they are called as uh, antigens. So an individual, uh, so antibodies will be producing, uh, produced against uh, or will be produced uh, for this antigens and an individual which is lacking one or both of these antigens, if an antigen, uh, if an individual is having only A, uh, we talked about the situation where an individual will have A, individual will have B, individual will have, have both A and B or individual might not have both A and B antigens. So if an individual is lacking one or both of these antigens, 
they will have serum antibodies to the missing antigens so what uh, uh, what is meant by this is that if an individual is having a a antigen that individual will produce antibodies against a missing antigen so if a, a particular individual is a blood group the missing one is he does not have as per our previous discussion that individual does not have b antigen as a result that individual's blood will be having antibody for b blood group is that clear so it is not if i am having antigen a my blood will not have antibody for a if there is antibody for uh, a a antigen all my rpc will be ruptured okay so that does not happen so antibodies so this point is to be specifically noted or it should be uh, put it in inverted commas in the sense that uh, the antigen which is lacking or antibodies are produced towards the antigen which is lacking in the rbc so that an individual with a uh, antigen will be having uh, anti b antibody an individual with b antigen will be having uh, antibody which is a so what will be the case with ab they are having both the antigens so in such cases they will not have any antibody because both the antigens are present in them as a result they will not produce any antibody coming to o it will be the opposite of ab o does not have uh, antigen a or antigen b as a result their body will produce the antibody for both antigen a as well as antigen b that's uh, what we are going to discuss here so now the question comes we said that antibodies are generated or antibodies are produced against our rbc how antibodies can be produced against our own cell that is a question so usually uh, when antibodies are produced against our own cells or own cells uh, they are referred to as auto antibodies or that will result in a disease condition which is called as autoimmune disorders etc so uh, how this happens how antigens are uh, or antibodies are generated against our normal rbc antigen Uh, and the answer is the antibodies here are not induced by the exposure of rbc to antigens so here uh, it is not the rbc antigens that is inducing the formation of antibody it is someone else and here what happens here is uh, the exposure to cross reacting microbial antigens which happens in the early uh, stages of development then our blood uh, blood cells or the rbcs are developing this particular uh, this particular um, process happens that is the exposure of cross reacting microbial antibodies present in the um, common intestinal uh, bacteria uh, so they cross react that means uh, antibodies are produced not against rbcs but against microbial antigens and these microbial antigens are similar to the antigens present on the rbc as a result if an antibody is produced against a microbial antigen and that microbial antigen if it is similar to our rbc antigen what happens is that uh, the, uh, that particular antibody will be produced and that antibody will be attacking the uh, will be attacking our uh, will be attacking the rbcs so uh, what happens in the case of an uh, a blood group uh, uh, individual is that you can see in the table an individual with uh, a type blood type uh, a is having the antigen which is a and he is and having the antibody which is b antibody so here his body does not have the antibody for a so how this happens how only the anti uh, b is produced and not anti a so uh, the, the reason is that so uh, antibodies will be generated for uh, the antigens for the microbial or uh, microbial antigens so uh, there will be uh, the uh, antibody producing cells for both uh, b as well as a but what happens is when individuals possesses these antigens which is complementary antibodies would be eliminated during the stage where 
where the antibodies that recognizes the self epitopes are heated up. So this is also happening during the early stages of development where uh, our immune cells are being primed. Those immune cells which is capable of recognizing self antigens, that means our self cells, there will be anti antibodies which are produced in such manners. So those antibodies which, is, which are capable of attacking the self cells will be weeded out uh, during the process of development of the immune system. As a result, in normal circumstances, antibodies are not produced against one's own cells. So the same thing happens here in the case of RBC. So the microbial antigens uh, will uh, or will prime the immune system to produce antibody for anti-A as well as anti-B. But anti-A and in the case of an individual with uh, uh, antigen A on its RBC, in his body what does what happens is his body or his immune cell during the process of elimination it will eliminate the antibody producing cells which are targeted against antigen A. That is why in such a, a, such a condition is prevailing. Uh, an individual with type A will have antigen A and antibody B. So coming to the points one more. The antibodies are induced not by the exposure of the red blood cells by the antigen, but of the exposure to cross-reacting microbial antigens present in the intestine or the intestinal bacteria. So these microbial antigens induce the formation of antibodies in individuals uh, lacking similar blood groups or blood group antigen on their RBCs. As a result, so and uh, such uh, complementary RBCs, which is again cell, will be weeded out. So the blood group antibodies, although elicited by microbial antigens, will cross-react with similar oligosaccharides on foreign red blood cells. So uh, even though uh, anti-B is uh, generated uh, or anti-B was produced because of uh, anti-B was produced because uh, uh, it was primed from a microbial antigen, even though they can react with foreign antigens which are present on the RBC. If and person with blood type A is receiving uh, blood type B. Okay, if he is injected with blood type B, what happens is this anti B antibodies will destroy these red blood cells. That is what is meant by that particular statement. That is, the microbial antigens they will cross react with similar oligosaccharides on foreign uh, red blood cells. And this forms or this particular feature that forms the basis of uh, blood type uh, or blood typing test and accounting for the necessity for compatible blood types during transfusion. So that is why uh, you cannot mix A and B blood groups. If you mix, definitely the blood groups will or the RBC will coagulate either with anti A or anti B. Uh, a type or a, a type A individual has anti B as you see here. And type B individuals will have anti A because uh, AB individuals are having both the antigens, they will have no antibodies in them because if they have either A or B, they will be destroying the RBC. As a result, they do not have any antibody. And O individuals, they do not have uh, the antigens. As a result, both the anti A as well as anti B antibodies will prevail in that body. So this is uh, how, uh, or this is uh, the outline of how the antigens of. So we saw uh, in in this particular session how the uh, or what are the antigens uh, which are present on the um, RBC membrane, or how what is the structure of the membrane, etc., and how are the uh, glycoproteins are uh, which are studded on the membrane. And in this session we saw how the glycoprotein or the specific glycoproteins which are uh, determining the ABO blood groups, how are they being added to the membrane and according to that, how there is an antigen, um, the formation of the antigen as well as the formation of the antibody, corresponding formation of the antibody. So This is uh, a diagram showing a, simpl a simplified diagram which shows this. An individual who is having type A he will have a antigen on the RBC. As a result, he will have the antibody which is called as anti-B antibody. 
type B uh, individual will have a B antigen. You can see they have shown color as well as uh, the shape difference here for the uh, antigens. They will be producing anti A antibody for type AB. They will have on their surface half will be A and half will be B. As a result, no antibody. In this, there is no antigens which is present. As a result, uh, they will have both the uh, anti A antibodies as well as anti B antibodies. Uh, so, with this, we come to the end of this particular session. Uh, in the next session, we will be discussing more on this uh, ABO blood group in man, how this uh, type A, type B uh, blood group are designated and how uh, the transfusion, etc., uh, can be performed, or what are the hurdles coming across it, etc. We will discuss such uh, things in the next session. Thanks for hearing.